Thank you for joining us at First Assembly of God Church in Clear Lake, California. Please welcome our pastor, Steve Schneider. Today we're going to talk about the grace of God. Uh, if you were here a couple weeks ago, and we spoke about that, we, we talked about God's grace. And um, I'm entitling this Power and Direction. And I'm kind of attributing to an automobile where you've got a 500 horsepower engine that will take you anywhere. It'll take you up the tallest hill. It'll drive whatever you're driving. And then there's the steering wheel that... Uh, you can take that big old engine and steer it off the road. And the Lord talks about the straight and narrow path that we're to walk on. And, um, you know, it's like where they say, well, what's the most important part of the car? Well, it's the nut behind the wheel. <laughs> and uh, God, wants to, God wants us to... He gave us choice, and that steering wheel represents the choice that God gives us. What do we do with this power? And do we use it for the right thing, or do we use it for the wrong thing, or do not use it at all, and just frantically keep steering and going nowhere in your life? And so we're going to talk about how grace affects both the, the engine and the steering of where you're going in life. Grace, 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 grace. We've hear, heard a lot about grace. It's because of the understanding of grace way back in Martin Luther's time that uh, he read in Romans that we're saved by grace and in Ephesians. And we're, we're, it's not by works. It's by what Jesus did on the cross. This is what saved us. Jesus dying on the cross saved us. Amen. Not by what we do. You see, God had already given everybody the law. They had the Ten Commandments, plus they had 603 other commandments besides that, and nobody could keep it. And it all was pointing to the Messiah. When you read in the Bible, you'll see two very important things mentioned all the time. Number one is God. Who is God? He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. And then we, we see after Genesis chapter 3, we see this little three-letter word appear over and over in many different types of forms, and it's called sin. And what is sin? Well, a lot of people have all these ideas about sin. Sin basically is missing the, the mark of following God. In other words, if you're driving down the road and you go off into the embankment, that would be a sin. You missed driving where you were supposed to go. Whatever is not following God, who is the creator of all things, who is the champion of all that's good, not following him is a sin. And sin is something that comes into a person's heart and controls them. And it happened after the fall. We're all born in sin. We have to train our children. How not to be selfish. And if people that never grow out of that are selfish all their lives. God wants to do something in us. And he had to come and pay the price. Take upon himself all of our sins. So that we could be free from all that stuff. And then live a new life for him. So back in Martin Luther's day. The, the Catholic church was, had gotten pretty corrupt. I mean, they were selling, basically selling grace. You could purchase so much and, and you, you could uh, buy somebody uh, who, maybe who's, who died and they weren't really right with the Lord and they were in this place where God is purging their sins and, and you could buy indulgences and if you spend enough money, then they could get out of that. And, and it's just crazy. It's not in the Bible. And anyway, there was a protest. Martin Luther protested that. And that's where we got the Protestant or the Protestant. That's what it is. It's a protest that we're saved by grace, not by works. And then we have 
we have whole movements of grace. There's, there's a number of preachers on the television, and that's what they preach on. Grace, 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 grace. And then we have um, churches. You know, they, they name themselves grace. This is the place of grace. And we even name some of our children grace. And we, we use that word, and we, but we don't fully understand what it means and how it fully applies to us. And we're going to go to God's Word and, and really find this out because I believe that most Christians only take advantage of 50% of the grace that's given to them. See, this grace is an empowerment to do something. And so we're going to talk about that today. Power and direction. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, out of the New Living Translation. just gives you a little more understanding of this. God saved you by His grace. Say, God saved me by His grace. God saved me by His grace. See, God wants you to take it personally, okay? God saved you by, your, by His grace when you what? Believed. Don't believe, you don't receive. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. Because boy, you know we would. What are we saved from? We're saved from the sin that caused separation from God. God is life. He is the author of life. Separating from God is like breaking a branch off a tree and watching that thing wilt away and die. The wages of sin is death. And so we're saved from the sin that caused both physical death and spiritual death. Separation from God. If we read this out of the, new, out of the Good News translation, another translation, it says, Ephesians 2.8, For it is by God's grace that you have been saved through faith. It is not the result of your own efforts, but God's gift, so that no one can boast about it. So, to condense this, we have here in the New Living Translation, it says, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. The good news puts it this way, it's not the result of your own efforts. We need to get that into our heart. Okay, we're going to build something scripturally that will help you in your everyday life. So please stay with me here. Acts 4.12. There is salvation from the sin stuff and no one else. I can't do it. You can't do it. No one's been able to do it. God has given no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. First of all, only God says who's saved. Doesn't matter what everyone else says. God has the first decision and the last decision. He's a, he, he makes the decision on who's saved, and only God can save you. That's what the scripture says. Okay, so under the name of Jesus. Jesus means, the, the name means God saves. That's what his name means. So, Jesus saved us by his death on the cross, paying for our sins. That means there's two important factors that save us. Jesus, who is God in human form. Now, I'm going to say something that might sound a little off to you, but it's true. Just because Jesus was born on earth did not save us. He had to go to the cross to pay for our sins. He was born as a lamb for the slaughter. It's all Old Testament typology. The wages of sin is death. God is just. He has to stand for what's right. He can't lie. He can't say evil is good. He can't say that, there, that, that doing evil, I'm going to reward. He would not be a holy, just God. So he had to make a way. Here we are, lost. We can't save ourselves. He had to make a way for us. The most ingenious thing in the world. 
He became a human being, lived a perfect life, and then gave His life for us. So, Jesus, two important factors that save us. Jesus, who's God in human form, His death on the cross. So we have Jesus and the cross is the source of our salvation. Jesus, the person, died on the cross to save us. So we have grace and salvation. Grace and salvation. It's a gift so nobody boasts. Now, very important, we don't do good works to earn salvation. Here's what happens. We do good works as a result of our salvation. We do good works as a result of salvation, all because Christ lives in us. Many believers get the fact of Jesus dying for our sins. They get that. They hear it over and over. We're saved by grace. We're saved by grace. Oh, thank God. Oh, my sins in the past. What I did yesterday. What I did 10 years ago. I'm really forgiven. And they understand that it was because Jesus died on the cross. It wasn't them that got this forgiveness. It was Jesus who gave us the forgiveness. They get that. But they don't get the next part. I know there's a motorcycle there, but we're not going to let that... <laughs> We're not going to let that distract us because we're God is greater and what needs to be said. I don't care who's trying to distract God. This is important. You got to get this. OK, OK. Hear what I'm saying. I mean, this is I didn't understand this for dozens and dozens of years as a Christian. I didn't get this. I'm trying to save you dozens and dozens of years of. But it'll, it'll elude you. It'll go right over your head if you don't listen. Okay? Grace. There's two parts of it. Heals all of our past sins. We get that. We get that. So a person comes to the Lord and all their sins are washed away. And wow, I, I remember when I received the Lord. I was so thankful. I was trying to work my own way into getting my own sanity and my own way of living right, and it never worked. And when I came to the Lord, I felt this load lift off me. It was incredible. But then the next day, I'm using the F word. I'm doing all, what's going on with me? Well, you know, it's a habit. I used the F word as a noun, an adjective, an adverb. I, I mean, I used it every way you could use it. I'm talking about fast. I'm, what, what are you thinking? Oh, man. Okay, we're saved by grace. Yay, yay, yay. But sooner or later, we go back and we're going to keep the law. Not by faith in Christ, but I'm going to keep the law. Nobody ever did it except Jesus. And so I'm just going to give up. I can't do this Christian stuff. I can't follow God. Every time I do something, it's wrong. I just know God's mad at me. And so then the old devil, uh, Satan means accuser. He comes in and accuses, accuses. Oh, it's no good. Yeah, not even going to go to church anymore. I can't get enough power to comply with the do's and don'ts of Christianity. Especially living in this crazy world. Where nobody around me is doing that. And then they read, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. Well, there you go. I can't do it. So, I either try to do that and then put myself back under the law. Or, I can say, I'm going to live for Christ because the same faith that removed all of my sins is going to stop me from sinning now. You see, I'm living in all my ways. I'm acknowledging him. Well, that takes a little bit of work. Well, do you want to get free or not? I always saw grace as past. All my past sins. I just sin now, but now it's in the past, so it's forgiven. But I keep sinning. I, kept, I, I couldn't come up any higher with God. You know, the closer 
that you get with God, the more you get to enjoy the fruit of His Spirit and the power and the gifts and all of that, the anointing. Oh my gosh. So I put these two, there's two words that are exactly the same except for one letter. It's called grace versus grave. G-R-A-C-E or G-R-A-V-E. Grave is the place where people die. It's basically the end result of Adam's sin that got placed on all of us. Just one letter makes all that difference. Grace is what saves us from the grave. It will die sometimes here on earth, but eternal life is with us. We will go up and not down. G-R-A-C-E, not G-R-A-V-E. There are people that hear the grace message and they, they accept that and they're so relieved, but then they go on their own without faith and Jesus helping them to live and they say, I can't live this life. They're right. They can't live this life. And then there's others that hear, well, I got one good amen anyway. Okay, now, human beings have, we all have one thing in common. Whenever we get something good, we're really good at messing it up. You know, religious organizations. Oh, boy. You know, not one religious organization is perfect because they're all run by people. Big business. Oh, that's really terrible. Why? Because people. It's not big business as some kind of entity that's bad. It's because of bad people. How about big government? There's nothing wrong with big government. It's the people in it. There's nothing wrong with church. It's the people in it. Well, where do sick people go? They go to a hospital. Word of, because they know they're sick. Yeah. You can know you're, not know you're sick and then die because you never went to the hospital. There's people that don't even know they need God. We know we need God, so we come to church to hear His Word. Yeah. Yeah. We have half enough sense to at least realize I need some help. Yeah. So you got these people that get, get saved and oh, it's great, 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 but then they can't follow Jesus. Because they're trying to do it all themselves. Okay, okay. Here's another way to mess it up. You want to mess up grace? Here it is. There's those that hear the grace message. I'm like Teflon. No sin sticks to the pan. <laughs> so these people say repentance from their everyday sins is not needed. I've heard one preacher on the TV say that. Very famous preacher. They think that no one, including God, should judge them. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. God calls good, good, and evil, evil. I could get into all that, but I'm not, I'm not going to go there because that's not the message today. The message today is that God gives you grace to be free from sin so that you can live with him. He's in the light. He can't, you can't allow the darkness to be in your, in your life and still be in the light. They just don't go together. It's like, you know, it's like I, you'll never see me in a white shirt. I've learned over all these years that every time I wear a white shirt, I get some kind of stain on it. Ketchup, you know, tomato sauce, lots of luck getting that out, you know. Uh, everyone looks at this shirt with disdain. Not good, not good. Let's get back to the Word of God before I get too crazy here. Still crazy after all these years. 
Okay, Galatians chapter 2, verses 19 through 21. The Apostle Paul's talking here. He says, For I, through the law, died to the law, that I might live to God. In other words, I'm not going to try to keep the law. I'm dead to that. See, dead men can't sin. I'm dead to that. I'm alive to God. And now the righteousness of God is with me. He goes on to say that verse 20, I have been crucified, killed with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. This is by faith. To faith, you have to believe it and confess it. And we forget about this. And the life which I now live in the flesh or in the human humanity, I live how? By faith in the Son of God. How are you going to keep His commands? By faith in the Son of God. You can be like everybody else that doesn't know the Lord and try to be Mr. or Mrs. Good, goody two-shoes. That's why that phrase came about. You're just goody two-shoes. Because nobody can be good. But we have the righteousness of God in Christ. Not only forgiving our sins, but empowering us to live for Him. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. The Creator of the universe loves you and gave Himself for you. we got to get this truth into our lives. Greater is He that's in me that's in He that's in this world. Greater is the influence of God in me than whatever's trying to influence me in the world. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness, that means trying to live for God, comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. I always saw grace in the past. I didn't see it in the present. It's always now. God is always now. His provision is always now. His word is always now. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. We live in God's grace to not sin the way we used to sin. We are in Christ, and Christ is in us. We are in a wonderful relationship with Almighty God. How awesome is that? Let's look at some more word. See, we've got to get the word in to get rid of all the confusion. 1 Corinthians 15.22. This is grave versus grace. Okay? Just as everyone dies, goes to the grave, because we all belong to Adam, Everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. That's grace. Let's look again at Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified, died, with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in other words, my humanity, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, for our life today, we recognize that by faith, by grace, we're able to be that new creation. Every moment, you have a fresh opportunity to dedicate yourself to the Lord. All the stuff in the past, Jesus died for every one of your sins. I don't care what you did. Now he wants to live in you and let the goodness of God. Think of heaven. Think of all the people in heaven that are with the Lord. Do you think there's any sin there? Jesus said to pray on earth as it is in heaven. That starts with us individually. People say, you know, I tried not to sin, but I can't and and it's because they've gone back to the law and they're not living by faith. 
See, we're believers. That means we walk by faith. We live by faith. Saying, you know what, God, when you hit one of those things, now we all have them, these reoccurring sins. There's not one person here that's perfect. Amen. It's like I heard years ago, Cassius Clay, before he was Muhammad Ali, he said, I am so perfect, I can admit my only fault. My only fault is I don't realize how great I really am. My word. My only fault is I don't realize how great he is working in me. You see, we talk about the engine and the steering wheel. You see, when you come to Christ, now you have power steering. <laughs> and now you have the power of God to keep you on the right course. You've got the engine. You've got the dunamis power of God. It's the Greek word where we get the word dynamite from. We have the dunamis power of God working in us. And Jesus leading us. We do all things through Christ. He's involved in everything we do. And he doesn't fail. We have different things that influence these hands on the wheel. We all know the tragedy of drunk drivers under the influence. They couldn't keep the car on the road, and they hurt themselves or other people. They're under the influence. There was a decision, free will decision they made to dr drink and then drive. God's given us that ability to do that. But I'd rather be under the influence of the Holy Spirit Amen. to keep my hands on the wheel of my life. For when things come up that I didn't know were there, he, he, I'm, I'm, he's going to help me get through this. I've got power and in, in the steering here of where I'm going. Instead of wanting to go this way and something pulling me back here, I have the power to go this way because greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. I'm doing all things through Christ who strengthens me. 2 Corinthians 5 I'm going to read you a few more scriptures, and then we'll be done. Then we're going to have a time of altar where you can have God alter your life. 2 Corinthians 5, 14, New Living Translation. Either way, Christ's love controls us. That's if you're in Christ. Since we believe that Christ died for all, we also believe that we have all died to our old life. The Lord's been crucified with Christ. He died for everyone so that those who receive his new life will no longer live for themselves. That's big. I get sick of me. I don't know about you. You get sick of me? I used to live in sick of me. Sick of me all the time. Instead, they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. Verse 16. So we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we, now, we know him now. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. This is the truth. Verse 18, and all, and all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. Gift from God. And God has given us this task of reconciling people in him. That's what we do when we go share what God has done in our lives. So, <laughs> you got to taste and see how good God is. For God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. No longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Verse 20. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. That's what we're saying to our community. That's what we're saying to this country. Come back to God. 
Stop the insanity. You talk about believing stupid things. All right. Verse 21, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we would be made right with God through Christ. But it doesn't end there. We keep going forward every day. Now, He is in us. He is with us. And the grace of God that removed all of our sins is now helping me to live for Him. You want to fulfill all the commands? Love God from your heart. In other words, He's more valuable and you have more affection for Him. Love is affection and the placement of value. What is more, what is, if you value and have affection for God, loving Him with all your heart, how would you do something that would offend Him? And then Jesus said to love your neighbor who was made in God's image as yourself. Love covers all the commands, all 613 of them. Jesus came back to bring us back into that loving relationship with Him. And if we try to do everything on our own, by, I'm not saying this, we shouldn't do good works. I'm saying if you do it for the wrong reason, if you think that you have to impress God or you have to do more to be saved, it's not that. It's, it's the opposite of that. Now you're back into before the Reformation came, where before we're saved by grace. Now we're back into our acts. Yet, you cannot just go on sinning and never changing and think that you're all right with God. Both are wrong. If you love Jesus, you will keep His commands. Why? Because that's what you want to do. You ever notice how the old things that you used to really like, you don't really like it anymore? We can still be tempted in different ways, the more, the more you ponder something evil, the more you give it room to start growing in you, then, then that's fine. But if, when you're tempted, you just say, you know what, Jesus, you, you saved me from all my sins, and I believe your grace is going to get me through this, and I'm not going to go back to what I was always doing. I'm not the dog going back to the vomit, as it says in Proverbs. No one likes to have a dog lick its face after it's eaten the vomit. It's not a good thing. Anybody that's had a dog knows what I'm talking about. With me, it's dog gone after that. That's <laughs> Power and direction. Closing here. Power and direction. Doing all things through Christ. Loving people through Him. Loving Him with the love He has for them. Loving even yourself with the love He has for you. And just delighting in what's good. Delighting in sanity. Instead of this insane world, we've gotten farther and farther away from the Lord in our country, and it's gone mad. What is in this world that's... Where can you go? The government will take it away from you or thieves will take it away from you. Jesus said, store up treasures in heaven. He said, That's the best thing. Amen? Okay, we'll leave you with Philippians 2.13. For God is working you in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. Either that's true or it's not. Gives you the want to, he gives you your he gives your want to want to follow him. And then he gives you the power to do it. He gives you the power steering. 
and he gives you the engine, the power to, to bring it all forward. Let's bow our heads. If there's any person here today, we would not be complete without offering you the opportunity of being joined with the Lord. Jesus made it very simple. Do you want him in your heart? Do you want to receive what he did for you? We all have choice. We can reject or we can receive. If you have not really received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have not received what he did for you on the cross, and you would like to receive that right now, just raise your hand and we'll pray for you. We want to give you that opportunity. I see a hand up there. Somebody else. I want, it, I want Jesus in my heart. I see that hand there. I see okay. Very good. Put your hands down. We're going to take a few minutes and have what is one of the most important parts of our service. I had thought about doing communion, and, and I really kind of wrestled with that, and God really put it on my heart and said, no, we need to really have that altar time. And I want to ask the people that pray to come forward and our singers to come up. We're going to sing a couple songs. And uh, singers, I think well, I want to sing Lead Me to the Cross again. That really goes with what we've been, what we've been uh, talking about. And before we do that, I'd like everybody just to bow your heads and just repeat this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I present myself before you right now. I believe that you died for all my sins. And you rose from the dead. Lord, with a heart of repentance, I come to you. I turn away from the world. And I turn my life to you. Help me to live for you. Every minute of every day. I can't do it on my own. But with you, I can do all things. Thank you for your message of grace that you have given me everything I need to follow you. I believe that you're my Lord and my Savior and I will be with you for all eternity. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now as we sing these songs, we invite you, can everybody stand we're going to sing a couple of songs, give you an opportunity to worship. Everybody who raised your hand, may I ask you to take the next step? It's really important. Have somebody come on forward and let somebody pray with you. Um, I remember when I did it some 40-some years ago. Uh, it changed my life. So we invite you to do that. Mm -hmm.